Welcome back, Physics Dirty. Uh, this is this is the last booklet for the Potential Energy booklet. I know I said the last booklet would be, but I ended up extending it into this one, so here we go. So I left you with this question. <clears throat> so because the boy is holding the rock above the ground, it has potential energy, and because it has a velocity at the start, it has kinetic energy. So to figure out the kinetic energy, one half mv squared, so a half times the mass times the velocity or speed squared, 40.0 joules. So that's the kinetic energy part. Potential energy, uh, it's a, again it's 0 0.2, uh, 9.8 and 1.5 off the ground, so 2.94 joules. So the total mechanical energy that that rock has consists of kinetic energy and potential energy, 40 plus 2.94, 42.9 is what you get there. Uh, over here, so we have that total energy we assume the rock will always have until it loses that energy in terms of friction or heat, etc. So the height that the rock is at when it strikes the tree while moving at 10 meters per second at the moment of impact. So for this one, we using the same formula, ET, total energy equals EK plus EG. Uh, we have to break it down though because we don't know the kinetic energy when, when it's going 10 meters per second. So we break the kinetic energy equation down to 1 half mv squared. Of course we're looking for height. So the EG equation we break down to mgh. And then we just simply substitute everything in. Total energy is what it was up here, 42.9. Uh, the kinetic energy part, 1 half times 0.2 times 10 squared and mgh okay so working this 10 times 10 is 100 half of that's 50.2 of that is 10 so we get 42.9 equals 10 plus 1.96 then it becomes a, a grade 9 rearrangement equa type equation so, uh, so we want to isolate h mm -hmm. to do that we have to isolate 1.96 h first of all so subtract 10 from each side we'll get 32.9 equals 1.96 h then divide each side by uh, 1.96 and we get 16.9 meters. So you can see once we've figured out the total energy in that previous question that is the same in um, following questions involving uh, that calculation. Okay, Let's look at another one very similar to that previous one. Uh, a 300 kilogram snowmobile is traveling at 30, 16 meters per second when it comes to the edge of a cliff. Since there's a deep, fluffy snow drift 2.5 meters below the cliff, the driver doesn't slow down but goes over the that should be goes over the edge uh, without changing speed. Calculate the falling, the kinetic energy when he leaves the cliff. So leaving the cliff, the, the guy is going at 16 meters per second. So using the kinetic energy. You can see the nice fluffy snow drift I drew there. So a half times 300 times 16 squared, 38,400. The gravitational potential energy when the snowmobile leaves the cliff. So we're 2.5 meters above the snow drift. So that's our height there. So again, 300 uh, kilograms multiplied by 9.8, multiplied by 2.5, 7,350 joules. Then, of course, you guessed at the total mechanical energy, simply adding these two numbers together, 38,400 plus 7,350, I get 45,750. We're rounding it off to three sig figs, 45,800. And the speed of the snow build when it lands on the snow drift. So when it lands on the snow drift, it's at a height of zero. So if, since EG is equal to MGH, if H is zero, everything's going to be zero. So all of it's, and you if you recall, when we're talking about the bottom part of a motion, chances are the EG will be zero and your 100% of your total energy will be in the form of kinetic energy. So as you can see here, this part zero, so ET is just going to be equal to the kinetic energy. So a half times 300 times v squared. So to solve for v squared, I'm going to have to multiply each side by 2. Or what I could do here is just take a half of 300 and get 150. Then divide each side by 150. 
and I get 305 is equal to v squared, and of course to solve for v, you take the square root. So it works out to be 17.5 meters per second. Okay, uh, the vocab, I think we just have the one page there. Oh, we have a couple of pages there. So gravitational potential energy, energy an object has due to its position. So if we lift something off the ground and hold it up there, we have our gravitational potential energy, and that will also equal the total energy if it's not moving up there. Base level, some level taken to be a zero reference point. So if you have a ground level, sometimes you may choose to a table to be that zero level or reference point. Ground level, the zero height level, so that's what we assume where the actual ground is determined to be. And lastly, total mechanical energy equal to the sum of all objects, kinetic energy, and potential energy. So usually at the top of a, a scenario, all of our energy will be gravitational. If it's moving down at the bottom, it's at a height of zero and moving fast, so all of the energy is kinetic, and anywhere in between is a little bit of both. Okay, there you have it. That is the last of the gravitational booklet.